Hi, welcome to Curiosity. This episode is for the month of October 2022 and it's episode number 36. So first we'll review the science news from the last month. Uh, you know, the, the first news is about cheetah, the reintroduction of the cheetah, that is uh, Project Cheetah. Uh, you know, so in 17th September, uh, a few cheetahs were introduced from uh, Namibia, you know, so three males and then uh, four females, right, into the Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. So, of course, as we know that it, it went extinct in India around 70 years back because of hunting. And the cheetah, the name itself is actually coming from Sanskrit, you know. So it's originally from India, then it went to the uh, Africa. But in Africa now, it is not extinct. It is the, the population is thriving. And then because of the, uh, it's, it's basically a gift of government of Namibia to India. And all these cheetahs uh, uh, have the, the GPS tag, you know, the, it's very much scientific, you know. And uh, they are closely under the observation. And of course, they, they are not completely released into the wild yet. They are in uh, captivity at least for one month. Uh, that is quarantine, the standard procedure, right? And after that, males will be released first, then females, you know, uh, of course, under close supervision and GPS tracking. And uh, yeah, so we are also waiting for yet another batch of uh, cheetahs from South Africa, uh, 12 more cheetahs are yet to come by the end of this year, okay. And Artemis won uh, a lot of delay and again, uh, uh, you know, the NASA couldn't uh, launch it. Uh, in On 27th of September, we were waiting for it, but then because of this uh, hurricane, you know, so that is Ian, the catastrophic hurricane all throughout the Gulf, right. Uh, Gulf in the sense the American Gulf right in Florida so and now probably because of that it will be it will not even be held in October the whole month October now so have to wait so probably in November they will uh, uh, you know attempt to launch it and another exciting news is that SpaceX is trying to help NASA to save Hubble so as we know, the Hubble's life is almost over and uh, it's, you know, it will be just a space junk. We cannot use it unless you reboost the Hubble into its orbit, the right orbit. So to reboost its orbital uh, to the, the required orbital, uh, you know, this, uh, yeah, the SpaceX is helping NASA. It's very interesting, right? And uh, another very interesting news is about the dogs. Dogs can sniff out the stress in owner's breath and it can change the behavior if they can sense some stress in its breath. Maybe, of course, it has something to do with the stress hormones like adrenaline, you know, and it changed its behavior to make them more placid. So very interesting, right? All these links are in the show notes. Please check it out. And finally, in the news section, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, every single month, the, the telescope is, uh, you know, giving or gifting the humanity with excellent images. Please check it out. I'm a big fan of uh, James Webb Space Telescope's page. Okay. So the, the, the latest image is of the ringed Neptune. Of course, and, uh, Neptune has ring. It's nothing new about it. But the rings of Neptune were, uh, you know, uh, becomes super clear, right? Uh, extremely high uh, clarity achieved by the extremely super resolution, you know, super resolution, uh, you know, the uh, imagery softwares as well as the hardware, the, the camera uh, on board the J, uh, JWST. Now coming to the discoveries, the first one is a thousand year old stalagmites, you know, stalagmite is basically a cave mineral deposit, okay, uh, from the remote cave in India. Uh, that shows that the monsoon is not that reliable even if you go back in time not like every single year we used to get high quality monsoon no even in the olden times uh, years would go without much of the monsoon or uh, that would result in severe drought you know so basically the rings of this uh, mineral deposits in the caves reveal the history the climatological history you know so it's basically the stalagmite is upward growing mound of this mineral deposit uh, in, in the caves, you know, uh, because of the, it's precipitated from the water dripping into the floor, you know, from the top of the cave, the water drips and 
that deposit grows 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 so that is what stalactite the opposite of that is something called stalactite stalactite grows from top to bottom while stalagmite grows from bottom to top you know next story is that the boys and men experience more social isolation than girls and women that's something interesting you know the the, the women usually socialize with themselves like you know, I think we have covered in this episode, one of the old episodes about the toilet breaks that the women do enjoy going together with the other company of uh, ladies. At the same time, men tend to go alone, right? So, and also, you know, the, uh, the men tend to work together rather than socialize together, while women tend to socialize together. That means like talk with each other more often than men do. You know, so that, uh, you know, the depression risk, we have covered that topic also many times that men uh, are a lot more prone, prone for the depression, but unfortunately, because of social stigma, they don't reveal it, you know, and an hour long stroll in the nature helps to decrease activity in the area of the brain associated with stress processing fMRI scan, you know. Uh, it is basically, uh, you know, the, the commentary published in Nature, British magazine. So this is a very interesting story. Of course, you know, it's just one among thousands of interesting papers on the benefits of exercising, especially in the nature, you know. So it's a good stress buster. Fourth story is that the spending time by canals and rivers is linked to feeling happy and healthy. You know, this is not really a reason but i really love canals you know uh, that i moved into a location in, in the city where i live in batinda the greenest place of batinda and proximity to the canal is just a you know 50 meters from my home is a canal you know although it's not that very pristine you know of course there are trash in it so yeah this study conducted in um, england you know england has got so many pristine canal right so of course walking along that canal in england uh, yeah, of course, that that is really interesting. I really love for it. I long for it, you know. And of course, you know, uh, yeah, it's 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 important. Uh, you know, it's a collective responsibility for all of us to uh, not to litter around, isn't it? Yeah. Fifth is that the Stanford researchers find that the wildfire smoke is unraveling uh, decades of air quality gains in the U.S. You know, so the, now the air quality in the U.S. is going down, drastically down to such an extent that CDC is now prescribing, uh, you know, air quality filters, you know, uh, air filters at home, right? So it's a, it exposes millions of Americans to extreme pollution levels because of the wildfire, which is itself is linked with the climate change, you know. Sixth, Bitcoin mining is just as bad for the environment as drilling for oil. So climate action if you're really in, involved with climate action and sustainable lifestyle you should not invest in bitcoin because mining the bitcoin just one bitcoin uh, the study assessed how much is that uh, amount involved so just to mine one bitcoin is 11314 us dollar of the climate damage which is tremendous Seventh story, living in the corrupt environment, that means if you are living in a corrupt society, corrupt country, makes you more likely to believe in conspiracy theories, regardless of your politics. <laughs> That's very interesting, isn't it? So the city where you live contributes into your, uh, you know, your belief and vice versa too, that, that we covered in one of the earlier episodes of the curiosity. Eighth. Nano engineers at the University of California at San Diego has developed microscopic robots capable of swimming inside our lungs for drug delivery for uh, you know the pneumococcal infection. So some uh, bacterial infection, the pneumococcal bacterial meningitis, you know, is really uh, tricky that it, it doesn't actually respond to any antibiotic injected antibiotics or you know if you take in through the oral route so the only option is directly delivered to that site so for that they engineered super tiny robots that can swim through the lungs you know very interesting isn't it yeah so it's material science the, the field i really love so much curiosity driven field ninth story 
genetically modified mosquitoes were used to vaccinate participants in new malaria vaccine trial <laughs> fantastic you know the, you're utilizing vector to vaccinate against the, the disease that the vector spreads great isn't it it's like the injection but injection is done by the mosquito <laughs> for anti-malarial vaccine fantastic i really like it and uh, then the, the tenth story is that math mathematics reveals that the best way to group students for learning is by grouping individuals with similar skill levels that maximizes the total learning of all individuals collectively that completely changed my perspective as a teacher i used to think that slow learners and fast learners should be intermixed so that they can help each other you know fast learners can help slow learner to pick up the things right but that is not what the, the latest study says so it, it says that the, the if you do that way then what will happen is that the, the slow learners will be left out there is nothing in, uh, to talk with the fast learners because they, they, they are in complete different worlds and fast learners are also not benefiting because they are not really challenging with when you are sitting with the slow learners you know they need to you need to keep on challenging with higher higher uh, uh, difficulty level puzzles or task right so it's better that advanced learners should be grouped together while slow learners to be grouped together that is what the uh, solution for this game game theory of course based on mathematical game theory you know <clears throat> 11th story, meta-analysis of 3 million people find that the plant-based diets are protective against digestive cancers like intestinal cancer, you know, or colon cancer. So this is very interesting. Vegetarian diet is not, not just good for the planet Earth, for the climate action, but also good for you for fighting, you know, fighting the cancer risks. Very good, right? And 12th story is that the paleontologists have identified a new genus of species of algae more than 500 million years old. It's an ancient fossil uh, much before the land plants originated. You know, it's one of the oldest fossils of plants. If you call algae as a plant, of course, it's still debated. Yeah, you can call because it's photosynthetic, right? And yeah, so before this oldest fossil uh, among the seaweeds is, uh, you know, it's a red algae, but now this one is something like a codium, which is uh, the green algae, green seaweed, and the authors, this paper is from the South China, you know, and others call it as protocodium, so it is quite similar to current day codium, species of the green algae, green seaweed, so it's, it's very interesting, oldest fossil of the green algae ever discovered. And finally, the 13th story of last, last month is that heavy weight training, that is resistant training, can help to protect your body's functional ability by strengthening the connection between the motor neurons and muscles. So, you need muscle and neurons to be connected, right? That connection will be much more stronger if you do the strength training, you know, like deadlifts, you know, so squats, all those or lounges, right? All these things are examples of the, the strong training. So it's very, very interesting. And it's just one among battery of evidences that support that uh, strong or resistant training should be part of everybody's exercise regime, not just cardio. So you need balance, cardio and resistance training. Okay. Uh, even if you're 70 years old, it's this paper I read uh, published by University of Copenhagen in Denmark and a fantastic uh, you know danish study even if you're 70 years way you know lifting weights can help you to combat the neurological uh, you know disorders great isn't it coming next is observances which are general the un observances the first is older person's day gerontological day second is world statistics day as well as gandhi jayanti here in india uh, you know the the birth anniversary of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, and UN observed this Gandhi Jayanti as non-violence day. You know that entered into the UN uh, list of celebrations. Third is Habitat Day, while fourth is uh, the beginning of Space Week celebrations. The whole one week of celebrations uh, to to spread the awareness about the space. 
science and you know astronomy you know fifth is the world teacher day seventh is cotton day ninth is migratory bird day tenth is mental health day eleventh is girl girl child day while thirteenth is disaster risk reduction day and sixteenth is food day world food day seventeenth is eradication of poverty day 24th is media and information literacy week and un day you know it's a it's a uh, birth anniversary of united nations and 31st is world cities day now coming to astronomy specific observances which are all binocular events and as usual i recommend sky view app for your uh, android phones fifth is moon saturn conjunction quite close by you can take it in the same frame sixth is uh, well october is a month of meteor showers you know lots of meteor shower and also solar eclipse wait for it sixth is camelo pardalid meteor shower eighth is moon jupiter conjunction ninth is the best day to watch mercury in the whole year and also moon jupiter conjunction continues so eighth and ninth is moon jupiter conjunction while ninth is the mercury day 10th is the uh, you know full moon day it's so, so called hunter's moon the october full moon is called hunter's moon and also saturn taurid meteor shower see yet another meteor shower right 11th is delta origid meteor shower 15th is moon mars conjunction 18th is epsilon geminid meteor shower and 21 is the the king of meteor showers orionid meteor shower is coming forth from the orion nebula you know that uh, constellation orion 24th is leonis minorid meteor shower see it's a fifth meteor shower so if you happen to live in uh, himalayas or in uh, western ghats uh, where you can see you know the the blue skies then uh, you can watch all this meteor shower so much clearly and 25th is partial solar eclipse and here in india it is visible of course it's still partial but in if you are in north india like me i live in north india and it is uh, more than 45 percentage and if you are really still north like uh, like in uh, ladakh uh, you know or kashmir area then it is uh, around 57 percentage you can get and if you happen to be from south india then uh, you know little bit less around 20 percentage you can watch it okay so still please wait for it 25th is the partial solar eclipse and finally opportunities are ample of opportunities please check out our show notes for the link you know ds kothari grant is open uh, dr ds kothari grant for uh, postdoc as well as uh, dr s rathakshanan postdoc fellowship serb sure a uh, scheme is open for the state university uh, empowerment and uh, there are several phd and postdoc opportunities abroad like max planck institute and, and, and nanyang technological university in singapore ntu uh, please check the full list below right and also please subscribe to our young academy of india's facebook page because that lists a lot more opportunities and also the science curiosity driven science stories like this every single day I also ping these observances over there. So do check out our FP page. Okay. I hope you like this episode. And uh, yeah, so I wish you all very productive and healthy and happy October, uh, the month of solar eclipse and meteor showers, right? I will see you soon with yet another exciting episode in the month of November. Until then, goodbye and please take care.